Calculating slope m, lesson 3.2c. When the rate of change of a relationship is constant, any segment of its graph has the same steepness. The constant rate of change is called the slope of the line. In mathematics, the slope of a line is represented by the letter m. You can think of the slope of a line like the slope of the side of a mountain. On a coordinate plane, there are four quadrants starting in the upper right corner. We can imagine the letter C for coordinate plane to help us remember which quadrant is which. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. In this lesson, we're going to be working in quadrant 1. This is the slope formula. The slope of a line is the ratio in the change in y values, the rise, for a segment of the graph to the corresponding change in the x values, the run. It's the ratio of y to x as the rise over the run. Now you notice these little numbers here on the lower right. They're called subscripts. They identify the y values and the x values. For the slope formula, m stands for slope, and we have our second y value minus our first y value, and our second x value minus our first x value. We read them as y sub 2 minus y sub 1, and we have x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Since these are subscripts, we read it as y sub 2, x sub 2, and so on. Here we have a little 1 next to this p, that's a subscript. That's telling us that that's point 1, and this is telling us that it's point 2. Do you notice that for point 1, it has the same subscripts for the x and y values, and for point 2, they have a 2 for their subscripts for x and y values? The subscripts help us identify which x and y values we're working with. Here it's telling us to find m, the slope of the line. We have our line here, we need to find the slope, so we choose any two ordered pairs. I chose right here, which is 2 for x, 8 for y, and right here, which is 3 for x, 12 for y. We use the slope formula, and we do the second y value, 12, minus the first y value, 8, we get a 4. We do the second x value minus the first x value, we get a 1. We have our rise over our run as 4 over 1. When we simplify it, we get a 4. We know the slope is 4 for this line. When we need to find the slope of a line and there are no points on the line, we need to choose a point that is at an intersection where a vertical line crosses a horizontal line. It's very important to choose an intersection. If we don't, this is 4 for x, which means this is 3 for x. Then we have 12 for y. If we had chosen this spot right here where it's not crossing, we would have had about 4 and a fourth for x and maybe 11 and a fifth for y. They're not exact numbers. We want whole numbers to help us. So it's very important. Do it where the vertical and the horizontal cross each other, and then we can find the slope of the line. So I chose 3, 12 for our second point, and 10, 7 for our first point. So we're going to do the slope formula, and we're going to do the second y minus the first y, which is 12 minus 7. I get a 5. And the second x minus the first x, I get a negative 7. Now, if you notice, this line is falling to the right. We know before we even started finding the slope that we're going to have a negative number. And we do. We have negative 5 sevenths. We choose two points and write their ordered pairs. We use the slope formula to find the rise over the run. The graph is falling to the right. It's a negative slope. Before we even began, we knew we would have a negative number. If we don't get a negative number and this line is falling, we know we didn't do it correctly. 
Whatever the answer is, this should be a negative number because it's falling to the right. Take a look at this line right here. It's going horizontal. For point 1, we have 4 for x and 5 for y. And for point 2, we have 10 for x and 5 for y. Notice the y values are the same. When we do 5 minus 5, we get a 0 for our rise. And then we do 10 minus 4 and get a 6 for our run. This is a 0 slope since it has a 0 rise. When you see a horizontal line, it's a 0 slope. When the y values are the same, it's a zero slope. Now this line is going vertically. If you notice, the x values are the same. When we do the slope formula, we do 8 minus 4, which gives us a 4, and 7 minus 7, which gives us a 0. So our rise over our run is 4 over 0. This is an undefined slope since the denominator, the run, is 0. Vertical lines have an undefined slope. As soon as you see that the x values are the same, you know it's going to be a vertical line and that it's going to be undefined. We're finished with 3.2c. We're going to move on to the last part, which is going further after the lesson. You'll see the going further section. And we're going to be using right triangles to find slope. Make sure you add the slope formula to your notes and that you draw these four into your notes for a positive slope when it's rising to the right, a negative slope when it's falling to the right, a zero slope when it's horizontal, and an undefined slope when it goes vertical. Have a wonderful day, and please join me for the last part of the lesson.